Hello, this is Greg Gals from Green Gregs. Drowning in a drought. A thousand year flood in a 1200 year drought. It's the craziest weather, no doubt. But what does it mean to you? What does it mean for uh, food supplies? What does it mean to the people that are getting hammered throughout the Southwest from both the drought and the flooding? Is one in the other? What is going on? What's going down? We're about to get all into that because we got some crazy weather. We've got a crazy climate at us right now. And how do we cope with it? What does it mean? And usually, guys, in the middle of something like this, uh, th this is the kind of things that preppers prep for. There there's the small things. And sometimes the it hits the fan is local. And when you're a prepper and it hits the fan, local, global, or whatever, national level, you're better prepared for it. When uh, we got hit by tornadoes here in 20 2011, it knocked our power out for a better part of for a week and some places longer. Uh, the fact that I was already a prepper had me set. I was good to go. I didn't have to worry. I didn't have to go to no stove. <laughs> so uh, that's the beauty of prepping. It has you prepared for the worst. And uh, they're getting it both ways in the Southwest right now. The drought, the flood, it is a drought in, as a flood in the drought, time will tell. Let's go through some articles here. Let's look at some of these things. Some of the dimensions of what's cooking, guys. This is Scientific American. What are they saying here? They're saying Western mega drought is the worst in 1,200 years. Now, this article comes from back in February, just to give you an idea. Even that far back in the drought was still going up until the mega floods. The monsoons just hit. So that's helping, uh, may help, but it's also a flood. It's a catastrophe in and of itself. So uh, you know, it's a mixed blessing. Yeah, look here. One in a thousand year flood sweeping through Dallas area. One in 1200 year drought, one in a thousand year flood. Literally, people are drowning in a drought. Jeez, mega drought, mega floods. Uh, that's what's happening. Guys, and that's why you need to get ready. That's why you need to prepare. Oh, yeah, subscribe to my channel, bring the notification bell, and click all. Because I'm bringing you this and more uh, coming soon. So, guys, but right now we have a great special. $250 off a three-month supply. This is the best special they've had in a long time. It is the best deal on the three-month supply since 2019. With prices going up, guys, do not expect this to last. I think it's going to be over at the end of the month, which is about a week from now. So this special is about to go bye-bye. So if you can at all uh, swing it, now is the time to jump at something like this, if you can swing it. If you can't do that right now, they still have the four-week supply for $50 off. It's not as deep a discount as a three-week supply, but guys, I'm kind of expecting these base prices to be heading up in the near term because they've kept them pretty stable for a long time. And with the price of food inflation and all the pressures that we'll have food supplies, you need to think about this. And if you can't afford it, go buy dry beans and rice or even just get a, a can of soup, you know, whatever you can do extra beyond what you need for the week. You need to start one can at a time or one bag at a time or something getting ready. The times we're coming at is crazy. Anyway, this is uh, prepwithgreg.com. Go to prepwithgreg.com, and that gets you into this. Guys, it might get you these special deals. Prepwithgreg.com. And it's 2,000 calories a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A deal that'll make you a winner. Real food, my friends. Real food. That's what it looks like after it's reconstituted. Real stuff. Okay, guys, let's go over here and get into some of these other articles and show us cooking. This is the satellite -ish, uh, images of Lake Powell. Big. Gone. Big. Gone. Yeah. Wow. That's stark. That's what's happening, been happening in the Southwest. Getting so low, they're worried about being able to produce hydropower, hydraulic power. It's called Deadpool. There won't be enough water in, in Lake Powell to even run the dams, which would be catastrophic for people in uh, Arizona, uh, 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 Nevada, <clears throat> Las Vegas, and even down into Los Angeles. Uh, much less water, much less power. So, uh, guys, it's going to be a rough hour. Check this out. Uh, now, maybe this uh, flood will alleviate this a little bit. The last I heard, the lakes weren't going to affect much yet. Now, maybe this flood's a sign of more things to come. One, one mega flood doesn't fill a lake necessarily, depending on how big the flood is, of course. <laughs> you know, ask Noah. He might tell you, you might fill a lake. <laughs> anyway. Lake Powell and Lake Collapse, it says. Lake Powell and Lake Mead could collapse. Oh, let's, see. let's get rid of this thing here. This mess. Come on, don't be throwing me notifications. I hate the notifications. Could collapse without more water cuts on the Colorado River. 
yeah, they just made big cuts, guys. You know, they, they just uh, – Cal- uh, Arizona got, got cut pretty bad in this deal. And this is, I think, an earlier picture when the water level might have been a little higher. So, guys, <clears throat> it ain't looking pretty for the lakes there. What does it mean? We'll, we'll go through some of these articles real fast. But, look, flooding started out, you know, in, in the western part in the area of, uh, you know, a little over a week ago in uh, Las Vegas. It took some people. Major flooding in Las Vegas. And then in Arizona, recap, monsoon storms pounded Arizona on Friday. Monsoons. And they've been pounding Arizona for some time. Look, I got friends in Arizona. I got a lot of friends in Arizona. I got property in Arizona. I got 40 acres in Arizona. And my biggest property, the only property of mine that's actually paid for is in Arizona. And people in Arizona are telling me this. I'm hearing uh, people say, hey, I've talked with the old timers. And they say, I ain't never seen rain like this. And, you know, I've had people say, I never saw it in my lifetime. And the old timers are telling me they ain't never seen it either. So they, they're really getting hammered out in Arizona and in Dallas. Yeah, flooding hits Dallas, Fort Worth, and some areas received more than 13 inches of rain. And it says, will. That means this is as of yesterday. And they were already being flooded before. This means after the floods have started, they were expecting to get another 13 inches. This is after that big headline. Let's go back and look at this big headline here. What is it? Uh, Thousand year flood, thousand year flood. Well, that was written yesterday too. One in a thousand year flood sweeping through the area. Wow. But see, that's the water they already had and we're expecting more. Uh, now, I think it's all passed through Dallas and it's going down to Louisiana right now. The holy smoke, guys, this is a catastrophe for people there. Floods are rough on people, droughts rough on people. Neither one's good. Too little water, too much water. And when you get too much water, most of it, unfortunately, it tends to run off. You need water soaking in the ground, replenishing the aquifers. Yeah, so uh, so this is showing that the, the Lake Powell being dried up. And and look, it's even hitting Colorado, guys. This is today. This is an article from today about the floods. Wiley scatters storms forecast mainly southwest and southwest Arizona, dry in the east in Colorado. So the guys got a flood warning, Colorado flood threat bulletin in Colorado. Wow, guys. So, you know, it's not over. Uh, <clears throat> but what, what's the real dimensions of this? Is a drought being alleviated? Will there be a re- uh, return to water? Is that what these floods signal? I don't know. You know, the forecasters are forecasting more drought. But, you know, it's easy when you got a drought to forecast that or any weather condition to just forecast a continuation of the same thing because the chances are probably at least 51% that you'll be right. And if you're wrong, everybody forget about it. <laughs> so, uh, so much for forecasts. But forecasters are forecasting more of this drought. That's what they're forecasting. Mega drought will continue. Now, are they right? I don't know. I mean, we can hope that they, there's some regular rain to get, get these river basins filled back up and these lakes filled back up. That could happen. But then again, the drought could continue. Uh, it is hard to say. But the forecasters are... Uh, forecasting a continuation of the drought. Now, this is FarmersBureau.org, by the way. Farmers Bureau has uh, a lot of information out here about what's going on. And basically what they're doing is they've been doing surveys. I'm going to stop this here. Uh, so there's another article on here. Hang on, let's find it over here. Farmers Bureau has been doing surveys about you know, what's happening. God, I wish this. I'm having my app here fighting me. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But, guys, uh, you know, here's the, the U.S. government's forecast. I'm going to show you this stuff. This is their one day forecast. So they see the rain is moving into Louisiana, southern Mississippi. So it's finally moved out of the Dallas area, maybe just a little residual rain. There's still rain in Arizona, New Mexico, and up into Colorado. And, you know, if you're in a desert, it don't take a lot of rain, especially in mountains there, to make for flash floods, guys. Uh, just a little rain can make for a flash flood. I mean, anybody that's been out in the desert knows that's a fact. A 10-day precipitation temperature outlooks. Now, let me put them both together on the same chart. All right. Now, U.S. drought outlooks, one month, three months. So this is when, so they're kind of showing the drought being alleviated in this area, but continuing back in here. And you can see the, the, the forecast for moisture really wet in Arizona. And Utah, all these areas which have tributaries that feed the Colorado River. So maybe that surely won't hurt Lake Powell and Lake Mead. 
and a little rain where I'm at. Yeah, we are getting rain here. I need to see it stop. So this is a three month outlook. And it looks like at least for Arizona and New Mexico, the drought is broken uh, for the three month outlook. So that's good for them. But uh, California, now look, here's what you got to see. Look, you see where it's red? That's where they don't have any rain, guys. This He's really hurting is California, Oregon, and Washington State. There's a lot of vegetables, fruits, and nuts grown in this region. Oh, yeah, in Idaho. The potato crop in Idaho is suffering. We all like Idaho potatoes, right? That's a major food staple in the United States. But the Idaho potatoes are suffering. But the Northeast is also having a drought. There's a big drought in the Northeast. Now, my friend up in Maine, New Day as always, is actually producing a bountiful garden. But uh, just to show you, it's a two-week, four-week. Well, that shows them getting more of a job. She's fortunately harvesting now. Oh, but look, Arizona's still looking good. Wow, even better. Mm. Even getting even wetter. So they're, they're forecasting a lot of rain in here. It may help the Colorado at least over the next month. So that's what we're looking at there. It may help them out. But this is what the immediate forecast, longer term forecast is who knows. <clears throat> but that is what they're forecasting. Short term forecast, you know, week, two weeks, even a month. They're not that bad off these days. We're getting a lot better at that kind of thing. But the long term forecast has got a lot of assumptions, conjectures in it. But it's not just the Southwest and the West Coast that have been hurting. Problem is, <clears throat> the crops in the Southwest have already been damaged, a lot of them. West Coast, yeah, fruits, nuts, veggies, they're suffering. But Europe is experiencing the worst drought in at least 500 years. Guys, we got rivers drying up there. This is the uh, Riab Reservoir, whatever that is, in Spain. They got rivers in Spain. The Rhine's drying up. All kinds of rivers in Italy are drying up. They're losing great crops in Italy. Uh, a lot of stuff is being lost real fast. I don't like that network anyway. So, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, let, let me uh, in the, the, the stop the sharing and let's just talk about these crops and what the Farm Bureau is saying about them. Uh, let me guys move back over there. Uh, persistent drought continues to hammer farmers and oh, ranchers in the western, central, and south, southern plains. So, the plains are still kind of a rough place. Um, so across this, now let's see, this article was written 15 August. All these rains just started up. Boy. Across the surveyed regions, respondents uh, said that the average crop yields were going to be down 38%. That's nearly 40%. Crop yields down 38%. That's nearly 40% right here in the U.S. of A. And uh, this is, we're talking in our grain belt area. 38% because of drought conditions. And one Arizona farmer committed a comment and says, many other, many other fields near us are now fallow. Cropland is being converted to housing developments at an alarming rate. Over 10,000 new homes are expected within a 10 mile race. So yeah, we got to build houses because land is more profitable to sell for houses than it is to grow food on by a long shot if you can develop the houses in the area that's got demand for that. Same is true around here. We're seeing building going up like crazy. So, uh, guys, what's happening is, is that farmers are having a hard time feeding their cattle. They're selling their cattle off. They're selling their, uh, they're, they're even destroying some of the crops. Uh, so they said that they're, they're down 38% by average on crops. 74% uh, of the respondents said they have re, uh, reported a reduction in the forest. Uh, 66 reported liquidating parts of their herd or livestock. 73% these are reported reduced surface water deliveries because of drought conditions. So what's happening is they don't have water, they don't have food, they can't feed their cattle, so they're reducing their crops. Right now, beef is cheap. So what's that mean for you? If you want to buy the beef, get it now. Same way with grains, because we're still eating last year's crop up to another couple of months, maybe three months, four months at most. We're still eating last year's crops. So we haven't seen that big price surge yet. But what's happened is the farmers have been hit by the cost of fertilizers and pesticides and everything they put on their property going up 250%. Fuel costs have gone up. Farmers have been hammered by all these things. I showed you in my video, my, my farm uh, food 9-11 video, 
uh, some time back. I went through several fields and showed you what they were trying to do to mitigate these costs and how that can also cut yields. And I'm seeing some of these crop fields aren't doing all that well this year. Some are doing well. Once the farmers went ahead and put, put fertilizer to them anyway, but what's the top, top what's the price going to be? What's it going to look like in the market uh, come this winter? Some places this winter are going to be suffering. Europe is going to be suffering for fuel, for heating. Uh, uh, the, the Northern Africa and places that rely on Russia and Ukraine for grain, people will be starving. And they're getting a little bit of grain out of Ukraine, but nothing like they used to. In fact, Ukraine car harvest is down because they're in a war. Farming in the midst of a war, especially when the farmers have been attacked, it's not a good thing. It is not a good thing, guys. So uh, you got to worry, you, whichever side you take on that conflict, it, and when you're talking about global food supplies, it's all bad anyway. It's all bad. Uh, so what does this mean? Prices will go up. You know, the one thing I predicted on this channel from, you know, that, that from one thing I actually predicted for some time back, I said food prices would go up. A lot of stuff I say this may happen or that may happen. But no, I said food prices will go up. And I've been right. That's one thing I've predicted, and it has. And it's gone up quite a bit, unfortunately. And I'm expecting this winter to be rough. It may be hard to get some things, especially when you start culling. So I'd say go stock up on your beef right now. Go stock up on things like that. Put it in your freezer if you can afford it. Check out my My Patriot Supply link. Go to prepwithgregs.com for that. And you better be gardening. Get ready. If you didn't garden this year, get ready to garden next year. Be a good time to start your worm farm. Now, don't buy this week because I'm about to go in and do, try to launch a tent. But the following week, if we get this rocket launched, I'll be selling worms. I'm not selling them for about a week. We're going to get this rocket launched, though. Uh, we got a couple of the launch attempts. One of them is going to be on another Sunday night, Monday, and I won't be able to, if that happens, the third attempt, I won't be able to uh, do worms that weekend. <laughs> I just hope we get this thing off, guys. Yeah, I'm going to be on the console of the launch of the space uh launch system artemis one rocket been working on that for some years i i do space stuff i'm an engineer i'm an electrical engineer i run two power grid defense conferences that's why i, I converted this urban farming channel into a prepping channel was i did a comp uh, a uh, video on that and it caused my views to go boing and i got a ton of prepper subscribers i'm okay well i'm a prepper too so i'll just start covering prepping <laughs> so that's what we're doing here guys but I've still got the farming stuff and you still need to raise worms and garden and things like that. That's one of the best prepping things you can do. And worm farming is a great prepping business. I'll go into that in the future, guys. But guys, seriously, we don't know if the West is going to come out of this drought. California, Oregon, and Washington State appear to be like, almost like they're cursed. There's talks that they could get hit by a river of water. But if they happen, that'll be floods worse than what we're seeing in Dallas and and in Arizona, we're talking mega, mega floods. You know, we had uh, Sacramento had 10 foot of water in downtown Sacramento back in 1861, 62 that winter. Yeah, that kind of flood. That could happen. And it's not for the reasons they cited. It, it happens. It didn't have any uh, climate change back in 80, 80, 1861, 62. This is just one of those things that happens from time to time. You get a river of water in the atmosphere, the atmospheric current shift, and what's going down in the tropics or wherever, just they get a ton of water shifted into, into California. And before it hits the mountains, it all drops out. And California gets flooded. So they're going, yeah, that would be catastrophic for them. It'd be catastrophic for the crops. The droughts are catastrophic, the flooding is catastrophic. The flooding destroys crops just like drought, maybe worse because it's all at once. Now, they need to walk for replenish. You need water. So maybe this is a turnaround and maybe things will recover in the Southwest, at least parts of it. <laughs> Beyond that, I don't know. It's all speculation. But right now, what you can know is crops this year are messed up. Food supplies are messed up. We have enough food in America. Yeah, we're, we're a net exporter. We'll have enough food here. Should be. But, you know, they'll, they'll still export food because they're, it's whoever pays them the dollars. That's where the stuff goes. Whoever pays the dollars. But right now, there's other challenges. I'm going to talk about billionaires buying up farmland to rewild the, the uh, West. That's going to be one of my next topics, guys. 
So stay tuned for that. That's why you need to subscribe to my channel, bang the bell, and click all because I bring you a lot of stuff. I bring you a lot of really good guests. One of my great guests was Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. I've had him on this channel at least five times. I found I was searching, I found five videos of the day. Uh, he was a good friend of mine. He was at both of my power grid defense conferences. He went with me to uh, Montgomery uh, to testify before the state. You know, he lived up in you know Maryland, Virginia area. Uh, kind of rotating that area up there for, for years and years. Uh, he is a prepper, was a prepper. Fortunately, lost his battle with cancer. And uh, he lost a, a national hero because he did so much to try to preserve our country, my friends. So much to try to preserve our freedoms and our way of life, to preserve the uh, power grid and alert us to our weaknesses in defense, which makes us vulnerable to things like the first strike in certain countries. But he was trying to get us where that wouldn't happen, peace through strength. All right, my friends. So check out the, uh, my video where I talk about the past of Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, and check out the videos, the five videos I listed under that, because that's worth watching. He was a intell brilliant intellectual man. He was one of the best. And, and he was a great guest. I really loved it. But, you know, we'll, we'll have some more guests on this channel soon. I'll, if I can get some more guests on Galactic Rex soon, too. So, my friends, thank you for watching. Reg out.